you out. They don't put you in the true deep sleep. Well, this, in my experience, does. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And we did sell out of the Hillary Clinton shirt, uh, Hillary Clinton for prison, 2016. But the good news is the next truck gets here in two days, made here in America. So we're keeping it up for sale. For all intents and purposes, it is sold out, but it's really not. You just won't get it in three, four days. You'll get it like in a week. Uh, so again, uh, Hillary for prison t-shirt in all sizes. On the back, it says legalize freedom. Great way to spark conversations. Okay, so how do we battle domestication? Uh, how do we battle not being made dependent on the system? And then that's a good question. What is your take on Benghazi, the Hillary emails, and what she's been up to? Well, first, I'd like to add, I'd like to say one thing. If I do decide to run, I, I am going to run to win. And I know that sounds very odd from uh, someone like me, but, but keep in mind, I've been in, in technology, uh, a leader of technology for uh, over 40 years, ever since the computer was first invented. 40% uh, 40, 40 of every corporate employee is involved in one or other aspect of computer technology. Uh, I went to DEF CON last month, which is the, um, uh, the annual hackers, a high technology crowd. I was swamped wherever I went for people wanting autographs, people wanting uh, pictures with me, people begging me to run. Yeah, you, you, you've got a household name. You've got the name cred. Right. And, and oddly enough, there, there are probably 45 million people out there uh, that, you know, many of them who have never voted before. I guarantee you that if I run, uh, they will get out and vote for me. Uh, it sounds insane, but... Uh, if no, you're I saying to, you're a serious candidate. It's a serious candidate to see you could win. If I, choose, if I choose to run, I will definitely win. There is no question. Wow. Well, break it down for us uh, more, because I've been interrupting. We've been going back and forth. You're good at that, but you got the floor. Tell us what you're planning to do, what you'd like to do if you run for president. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my campaign manager has said that he will break both of my kneecaps if I say anything specific, Alex. So... Um, we're going to have to talk in, in, in generalities here. Um, again, as I said uh, before, my first priority is, is, to, is to return privacy uh, to the individual. It's, it's being stolen by the government. It's being stolen by, uh, by, by hackers because the government has made it easy for hackers to do so. Uh, that's, that's my first priority. And, and beyond that, it's, it's to bring us all back to a state of freedom. Uh, we do not need a father figure as a governor. Uh, if you look at the number of government employees uh, compared to uh, the the number of uh, American plain citizens, it's, it's reaching you know uh, an astronomically large percentage of and and we are spending trillions of dollars for what? Government should be be created by people for people uh, to build roads, create schools to do those and, and, and national defense. Uh, government should not be in, inside our bedrooms looking at what we're doing when we're alone with our wives. They should not be on the telephone listening to every, every word that we speak. They should not be following us around. They should not be trying to find out who our friends are and what our friends are doing. Uh, th this, is, this is really the, the, the fundamental problem. Um, to get back to a state where every man, woman, uh, or at least every adult is responsible for themselves and takes responsibility for their own actions rather than going, well, you know, it's easier if, if the government takes care of me, so I'll give up this bit of privacy or that bit of freedom. Um, again, the, the, the specifics I cannot tell you at this point because I, I need both of my kneecaps to, to, to walk, Alex. I understand, and that's normal to then start launching your actual platform uh, after you've announced. You, you committed some thought crimes there. I want to talk about Caitlyn Jenner, political correctness, all the rest of it. I mean, I know you're a classical liberal and that you're live and let live, but don't tell you how to live. In public schools nationwide, he or she is off the questionnaires. You don't say boy or girl, father or mother, husband or wife, because the very existence of that is hurtful to someone. That sounds like a Kurt Vonnegut satire book from the 50s about, well, the, about the left going into tyranny. It doesn't sound like reality, but you just said the right to not know what's happening with you and your wife in your bedroom. How dare you use the word wife? That's hurtful. Do you want to apologize? Well, no, actually, I don't. And, and here's, here's something even funnier, Alex. I, I, I write articles for a, a number of different publications. Actually, International Business Times is one of them. Um, and two weeks ago, I, I wrote an article where I 
Uh, I, I've, I got hold of the, the Ashley Madison dump. That's the, you know, the, uh, the, the cheating sex site. That, I'm glad uh, you raised that. Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, well, you know, I mean that, uh, I, I don't judge, uh, the morals of anyone, but it had some very interesting emails in it. However, I've, I ascertained that it was an inside job and done by a woman. And I gave the reasons for why it had to be a woman. Uh, the, they, there were two manifestos that were included in the dump. Uh, among the statements in the manifestos were men are cheating dirtbags. Uh, men are scumbags. Um, and, and lots of things. The, the most telling one for me was um, the, uh, the, the quote hacker, the alleged hacker, uh, included a statement saying this man, and it gave the man's name, address, and everything, actually spitefully joined Ashley Madison the day after Valentine's Day. Well, I included that as a as a probable female statement. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, I, I have to have my friends remind me when Valentine's Day is coming up, and I do the same for them when I find out about it. Yeah, exactly. Men aren't looking for sex to be spiteful. That's what women do. Right, and so uh, and and so especially to say spitefully after Valentine's. Men are looking Day. for sex for sex. Let me just give women a little newsflash. Well, you know, you can imagine some dude in a bar going. Oh, um, my wife cheated on me the day after Valentine's Day. You know, what, are you, what are you talking about, dude? Uh, it, it would be an insane thing. Yet I got so much flack. Uh, so many uh, articles were written saying that I was a misogynist, um, you know, out of touch with the world. Uh, but yet, you, you know, for a fact that, that men do not generally say men are cheating dirtbags. No, so, I, I can pretty much maybe, say that's guaranteed are, a woman or someone trying yeah, to frame women. Hang on a second. Marley, hush. I'm sorry, that's my dog. Hey, can we meet uh, the dog? Can we meet the dog? You want to see the dog? Absolutely. We got Marley. a fourth hour coming up today, John, that's hosted by Marley. my crew. I want to invite you to stay on longer. Yeah, here's, uh, where's Marley? There he is. Come on. That's a nice the, dog. A pit bull right here. They're uh, all over my face now. Well, so, you like high caliber guns. You like semi autos. You like, uh, nice dogs and you like privacy i think you'd you know what people can say oh you're a racy guy you escape police all the rest of it he's too wild to be president well at least you wear who you are on your sleeve you're not creeping around like these no, phonies right. i mean you like full-grown women not 12 year old pages at the white house that, that's correct and 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 the, you know there's no secret about my life i i've i have in fact uh, i wrote an article for international business times the the day after the office of program management was hacked and they said that every top secret clearance uh, folder had been taken. Well, I, I had a top secret clearance while I worked for Lockheed. So I wrote, I wrote an article and they included everything I'd ever done um, because they ask strange questions and every question. Have you ever taken drugs? Yes. Uh, what kind? Every kind. Uh, often, as often as I could. Um, and, and, and so I just listed all the things I've done because I don't care. You can judge me any way that you want, but I don't know anyone who's perfect, Alex. And the government, uh, of course, hired you because why you were honest? I, I guess, so. in fact, and I was shocked when I got the clearance. I thought, good Lord, they will never hire me because I was, I was totally honest about everything that I had done when they asked me these questions. I go, well, that's out the window. In two weeks, I got a top secret clearance. So maybe, maybe the government said, well, this guy's pretty honest. You know, the, It's going to be hard for someone to blackmail him because they told us everything he'd done. So I, I don't see any sense in trying to hide parts of my life. I mean, and, and I, I've done some things which, which you know, some people might judge as improper. Um, but I, w I will not deny it. Uh, you know, I What about this whole day. police thing? Because at first it was, uh, what really happened with the police recently? Because then I heard that they were actually your friends, or what happened? Uh, which, uh, which police raid? In Belize? Well, no, we know what happened with that. Uh, cyber security legend John McAfee was arrested over the weekend on charges of DWI and handgun possession. What happened there? Right, okay. Well, the handgun possession, I, I, I always carry a gun. Um, and, and sure, you should be state. able to. And it's not illegal in the state to carry a gun. Uh, I had just that morning got a prescription for Xanax. I've never taken Xanax before. Uh, I got the, the prescription because I'm having trouble sleeping. I live, I live a, a stressful life. I thought... Uh, someone said, "Well, go to the doctor and, and see, see and see what they recommend." Uh, they prescribe Xanax. 
I don't function well on Xanax. I, just, I discovered that the day that yeah, I... Yeah, I can't it. take Sleep Age 2, and I've tried it before. That's why I'll put a plug in. That's why I'm going to send you a bottle of Knockout, John. If Knockout works for you, will you give us a plug? I will, absolutely. Five but bottles immediately. But Xanax is not just for sleeping. I mean, it's, it's for basically just calming a person down. But it calmed me down to the point that I couldn't even function. So it was the first day I had taken it. I had the prescription bottle issued that day. I had never taken it before. Uh, I took the required amount. Um, I, I had, uh, accepted a blood test. When the blood test comes out, um, it, I, I think that by law here in Tennessee, if, if it is a prescribed drug, uh, and if you're not taking um, uh, an excessive amount or amount exceeding what the doctor has prescribed, I, I don't think there'll be any charges. Um, but again, if you are arrested with a DUI in the state of Tennessee and you have handguns, it's a fairly serious offense. But I, I'm Which not, is pure I'm not. bull. I mean, you don't want to, uh, you know, they have the 68 Gun Control Act to try to say we're going after criminals with guns, but then all they do is snare good people. I mean, why should you get in trouble if you're on a prescribed drug and you've got a gun to protect yourself? It's just pure bull. And Obama has announced outside of law he's coming after the guns. I want to ask you about that. Now, John, we've got a fourth hour of overdrive, and a lot of stations are now picking it up. And, um, my, my reporters host that hour, and that would be a little bit different. I know they have some guests lined up and things, but would you like to do 20 minutes in the next hour with my next host? Uh, you know, I, I would love to, Alex. Unfortunately, I have uh, I have someone else that I'm going to be talking to. On I a totally, totally understand. Time. All right, so well, can you stay till 5 after so we have more time to take That's calls? A, I can do that, yes, All sir. right, you're a sweetheart. All right, two final segments, one uh, in the next and then one after that in Overdrive with John McAfee. We'll talk to Rob Bill, Mark, Eric, and John straight ahead. And then now we do the fourth hour, it's back. Some days I'll be hosting it. Other days it'll be David Knight, Anthony Gucciardi, Rob Dude, Jakari Jackson, uh, folks like that. Um, Joe Biggs, Darren McBreen, stay with us. Look at this headline. Burning Man founder addresses diversity problem by suggesting black people don't like camping because of slavery. No, it's been a hipster, trendy, psychedelic event for decades. That's that genre that white kids, Asians, and Hispanics are into. Blacks just haven't felt like they're part of it, just like you can have different concerts and things that are mainly black. It's just, it's just a cultural deal. But they act like it's bad, and the founder basically apologizes because I mean, it's like going to an Oktoberfest, and it's mainly Germans, or going to Cinco de Mayo, and it's mainly Mexicans. It's, it's not bad. It's okay to have a culture. See, political correctness is the end of culture. It's really crazy. John McAfee's our guest. I, I got to ask this question before we jam in some calls now and next segment. What do you make of the China meltdown and them dumping $94 billion in U.S. Treasuries? I mean, I think this economy is going down the tubes, John. Well, I, I think, I think that, that we have way underestimated China as a, uh, uh, as a power uh, in the world. Uh, I'm, I'm in computer security, and... Uh, many of the hacks that have happened here in America, our government hacks and corporate hacks, uh, are, are done by the Chinese. Uh, they're a brilliant race of people. They, they, they work hard. They study hard. Uh, their educational system is, 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 is second to none. Um, and they are a race. That's not racist that they exist. Well, it is a race. I'm, I'm married to a black woman. You mentioned before, you know, the cultural differences. And you have to believe me, there are massive cultural differences between the races. Um, you know, sometimes when I speak to my wife, I, I have to actually translate uh, the, the words that I'm saying because culturally, uh, they, they, don't, they don't apply to, to her experience as, as a black woman. And the same thing for, for me. She has to say, well, uh, this means this, this, and this. And I go, oh, I get it. I understand. So it's a fact of life. Um, and yeah, I'm, they're I'm, making I'm, the I'm, fact of life bad. Well, but I'm the least racist person on the planet. Well, not obviously, but I, I am married. No, to but that's woman. what it comes down to is they're making ju us just being different as if that's bad itself. So we'll accept their whole corporate override. Do you agree with that? Well, of course. I mean, it's, it's uh, we want we, the, the, the purpose of government is to make everybody the same. Uh, that way, everybody's easier to control. This is a fact of life. I mean, the holy grail of dictatorship is not power necessarily. It's knowledge. Of the populace, if you have absolute knowledge of every citizen, you have absolute power. Then, 
Uh, and and that's what the that's what is 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 happening here and in countries all over the world. Uh, the 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 powers that be want to know.